with, uh, let's see, we have the art and science of connecting to consumers with John Stapleton and Chris Tuff from 22 Square. If they could come on up. And for those of you that wanted to continue the conversation about metrics and GRPs and eGRPs, there is a, I think there's a whiskey tasting later this afternoon. We're going to get a lot accomplished then. But you gentlemen take over. Thank you. Great. Thanks. All right. All right. Hello, everyone. We have a, a brief presentation for you guys uh, before we head off to lunch. It's about 15, 20 minutes long. Uh, and it's called Welcome Intruder. And Chris and I are partners at the ad agency we work for, 22 Squared. And it's uh, an independent agency that's um, pretty integrated. I know a lot of agencies talk about being integrated, but when you start to hopefully see uh, us work together and talk about creative in general, uh, you'll start to understand what we're talking about. Art side being uh, creative director uh, and science being uh, director of emerging media. And we're going to show some examples, uh, some formulas for success. We have a ton of them. Um, I think we have about eight uh, to get through, and we have some uh, demonstrations of what we're talking about. We started with like 20. So, and then we found out we only had 15 minutes. We were like, okay, it's going to be eight. Um, I'm, I'm cursed uh, with being a light sleeper. Um, you know, I, as a boy um, growing up in the inner city, uh, I had a hard time. I would hear every little creak, every little dog bark. I would wake up. Uh, and uh, being in the inner city, there was a lot of break ins, so I was super nervous. I would. Uh, be panicked uh, about um, constant, um, you know, invasions of, of our household. I would worry about uh, everything. I'd wake my mom up, uh, telling her I heard a noise. Uh, I was always having these visions in my head. Uh, I would always go back to sleep, but I was always waking up again. And, and I, one thing I, uh, I always did is I always, I, was, I always ran through the house and made sure all the doors were locked, windows were locked, uh, everything needed to be sealed tight, and I always reminded my parents to do so, except one day. And that day was a big day because I wanted all the doors to be unlocked. I didn't care anymore. I really wanted uh, something to happen. And so what's the point? You know, if you think about uh, brands, I mean, this guy is kind of creepy, so he might scare you as well. But uh, the point is, isn't for brands to be like Santa. It, it's really to understand when we're creating uh, content, we really need to be welcome. And we have a belief that we play out throughout our agency. And it, and it works in all of our departments. Uh, and it, it really leads to something that I think we can judge how we make our decisions. So we believe that brands can be a welcome intruder into someone's life. And to be that welcome intruder, it starts to understand what advertising is. Because you start looking at advertising and saying advertising is you know, a relationship and a conversation. But there is some realities to what advertising is. We know what the job is. But can we shift it, especially online? Can we create content that is welcome? Now, in order to demonstrate that uh, what's welcome, let's talk about what's not welcome. Um, I actually like these commercials, but this one in particular uh, is something uh, to point out. Did the little piggy cry wee, wee, wee all the way home? Wee! Wee, wee, wee! 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 Max. Wee, wee, wee! Maxwell! Yeah? So if you think about pre roll and content and what we're creating, I mean, isn't this kind of funny when you think about? Uh, let's create a concept that's equally as annoying and equally like ear shattering to it. And then you just want to get to that point. I couldn't get to that skip button fast enough. And that's important when we talk about creative because we're like, well, did that really work? I mean, I love these commercials. The, the Abe Lincoln honest, honest one is awesome. It has, uh, uh, it's pretty funny. Uh, it's entertaining. Uh, but this one kind of goes against the grain. If I was thinking of this idea, I would start to worry about, well, 
is this, the, is this annoying concept really going to create uh, more problems for us? So we talk about things that, that possibly do work is, is something a little different. So I mean, looking at pre-roll, 2% of online video is actually concepted to live online. That's a problem. So when they actually concept uh, or you take the stuff that you have and you put it into a space for the way that it's meant to be, it's appreciated. It's welcome. Hey there, YouTuber. Now stop me if you heard this one. A lion, a zebra, a hippo, and a giraffe walk into a casino. <laughs> Run from the lion. So, I mean, just by saying, hey, YouTubers, um, and making the most of the pre-roll there is huge, but it's also making sure that when you're living in these spaces that you're designing the piece of content to live on. Um, here's one case where you could actually continue interacting with this content. But, I mean, how often do you actually f sit through this pre-roll and you're just trying to fast forward? And what online allows us to do is be highly targeted with pieces of content that we know will break through, and not enough people are doing that. So let's look at a couple of formulas. Um, one is, is kindled the fire of emotion. You know, this is important. Uh, why do things, um, you know, when you look at broadcast and video, and, and some people would say broadcast doesn't belong in the online space, but that's, that's not true, it's content. Uh, but why is it successful uh, of kindling the fire of emotion? And, and certain uh, broadcast translations work better than others. Well, one is uh, it's universal. Depending on the emotion that we're talking about, can it be universal for everyone? Can everyone put themselves into that piece of advertising and, and smile? Uh, is it timely? So here's a quick example. Let's make pinwheels. OK. Let's see, what do we need? Oh, feel, the baby's kicking. I can feel it. I know. Can the baby hear me? I think so. You know, when you were restless in there, I used to sing to you. Did it work? <laughs> Sometimes. One thing always worked, though. I used to tell you secrets. Do you want to tell her a secret? What would I say? You could just tell her something about yourself. Well, maybe. Well, you could tell her what a great soccer player you are. Help me. <laughs> Fold it here. And... It's a pinwheel. It's a pinwheel. We made it. <laughs> Why don't you tell her what a great sister you'll be? You're really going to love Mom. So I don't know how many of you are crying, but like every once in a while, it gets you a little teary-eyed. Um, but here we have a piece of content that is actually appealing to many different audiences. And I think that is what we're talking about here. Because if you're a teenager, if you're a college student, if you're a new mom, if you're a grandparent, this really resonates. And all too often as brands, we try to create content for everyone, and we hope to, that it actually proliferates in the social and online spaces, but that's not really true. A quick um, story, when I got back from Christmas vacation, I had posted all these wonderful pictures of me and my two daughters and wife at the beach, and everyone was like, Chris, what an awesome time you had. I was like, well, actually, I Facebook faked the whole thing. It was horrible. They were sick the whole time. It wasn't fun at all. And so I said, all right, I'm going to do a pledge to you guys. For the next week, I'm only going to do real life circumstances. This is actually a picture of my daughter after she fell on her face on her scooter. There was one of my five-month-old daughter, and it was out of focus. And I said, my daughter's crying so hard right now that I can't even get my camera to focus on her. And it was something, everyone was like, thank God you're a real person, Chris. Like, this is something that I actually can, can vibe with and align with. And I don't think brands do it often enough. And we need to scale this emotion. And so when we're thinking about how we can break through with content, let's look at what, heart, what's, what type of content on my Facebook page, on, in the video space, is my audience actually interacting with. Um, we can actually dive into these, these APIs with Twitter and Facebook and figure out exactly, of these interest categories, what's resonating. Um, we can uber target this video. So if we've got a piece of content that we know is targeted for the moms, then let's do that. 
Um, and then let's make sure that we're testing the content out there. Not enough people, there's this thing called dark posts or unpublished posts on Facebook where you've got essentially the best focus group in the world for creative and you don't have to put it to everyone. You just put a little bit of paid and see how it does before you actually go live with something. So it's important to scale this emotion. Uh, number three is, is a fairly simple one, is hook them early. The first four seconds mean everything. Um, it's really important to engage our, our audience and, and, and be very arresting. Uh, here we chose music uh, with some footage that we've taken uh, of Costa Rica. We went down and shot 200 hours worth of video to serve it up uh, as a voice for the country. finish that, so it's nice to hear it in uh, some really good sound. So, But that's working with M83, a music group. Uh, we thought it was very important to find some authenticity in music uh, along with our, our beautiful footage. I love uh, nowadays when people, I mean, everyone's uh, clients are saying, you know, we want a viral video. And, um, you know, agencies are actually building around this one thing that they produce these viral videos. But, my big point is that virality is truly engineered nowadays. I mean, when you look at a YouTube clip that you see has been successful, um, the Heineken 30-second spot of the dude walking through the, the halls, 80% of the 8 million views were actually paid for, right? So, you know, there is an art. This is the science piece of what we're talking about here. So we can buy media to make it pop. Um, and not enough people, I don't think, take that into consideration when they spend $100,000 or work with a pop tent, and I know they are, are big believers in this, but you've got to make sure that you're buying the media to make this stuff pop. Um, so making sure that you have enough uh, up front. Also buying for the device, understanding what your consumer's day in the life is, then you've got to target that way. So between you know, the time between 12 and 8 in the morning, then we should be buying for the mobile device. From 8 until the end of the workday, we should be buying for the computer, and then uh, accommodating for the uh, iPad experience later. So making sure that you're buying for the actual device. And then using if this, then that formulas. Because when we get a bunch of content that we're not sure is what, what's gonna actually resonate with the different people that we're trying to target, we need to have formulas to actually put paid against this stuff to make it pop. And then once again, be careful of the click. So many people go out and have a YouTube clip and they want a million views, so they go to 500views.com and for, for $2,000 you can get your million views. It's more than a click, it's the, the quality of the content that we're trying to put out there. So make sure that it's not just about the click, that it's about the experience. Uh, number five, respond to content. Um, working with American Standard uh, launched their campaign called uh, Flush for Good for every uh, purchase of a toilet, they'll donate uh, to a system in a, in a country in need. And uh, there's a lot of content going on out there already. Uh, there's also advertising there that's going on out there. And um, for water.org, uh, Matt Damon talked about not going to the bathroom until something is done about uh, the situation of, of water. And we worked collaborating with uh, American Standard with the CEO, uh, Jay I'm Gold. I'm not going to go to the bathroom. Sorry. With the, the CEO, Jay Gold, to f let's, let's make content that can respond to Matt Damon. Let's, let's have advertising talk to advertising, which is a different strategy altogether. I'm not going to go to the bathroom. Not go to the bathroom? Really, Matt? That seems a little extreme. Why, you must be ready to... Sorry, that was uncalled for, but 
When you gotta go, you gotta. <laughs> Last time, Scout's Honor. In all seriousness, Matt, we support your cause. And that's why with every purchase of an American Standard Champion toilet, we'll donate a life-saving sanitary toilet pan for distribution in a developing country. So you can. That was just an example of how even the type of comedy matched up to what we were talking about. So that, that, that comedic formula uh, answered each other. So we, you know, I think um, the Super Bowl was testament to the importance around real time, and now you've got everyone clam, all these agencies that are clamoring to set up these news desks. And you know, being real time isn't just about having one piece of content that during the Super Bowl, like what Oreo did. It's much deeper than that. Um, and you know, you've got to have the right tools to actually know what's going on in the space and respond accordingly. But you know, so much of real time where we can be effective as brands, especially leveraging some of the social stuff, is just by tweeting back. It's not just about creating these large pieces of content to, to scale to everyone. Um, you know, making sure that we know what types of trends are, um, are being uh, popping at the top with our targets on Twitter and then potentially entering those conversations through trend jacking. Um, and then having a clever uh, but personal response strategy to some of these people. And then once again, the importance of surprising and delighting our, um, our different customers and then making sure we film the stuff so people share it even more. Um, one last one, I think we have one more after this. Design for the moment, uh, Buffalo Wild Wings um, we've been working on a campaign for some years now. It's called The Unseen Force in Sports. Uh, that's what we titled it because, you know, we really want people to enjoy uh, the moment of Buffalo Wild Wings, but also being there and being there with uh, your friends and witnessing a lot of this action is very important. Um, but what about some of the stuff we're getting credit for, okay, um, that, that is happening already. Sprinkler systems going off uh, in Miami, they start giving us credit. We're not asking for it, we're kind of sitting on the sidelines saying, yeah, that, that may or not have been us. And uh, you know, how can we create that as that moment is happening? So for this year, uh, for March Madness, we created some broadcast commercials uh, that are extending the bracket or extending the game and prolonging that. Here's one of them. Yes! Man, I love this place. I wish the tournament lasted longer. This just in, the tournament has expanded to 256 teams. What does this mean? We're in? We're in? We're in? We're in! We're definitely in. Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings, Beer, Sports, and the official hangout of March Madness. We're in! Okay, so now what happens, so we created these commercials, what happens when an overtime happens? So Kansas, Michigan game, uh, Trey Burke hit that famous shot uh, and it went into overtime and we had content ready for it. We wrote, we've written uh, spots, we've, we've produced them in-house uh, and uh, we had all these variables and, and creations uh, worked up so we can serve these 15 second commercials uh, on broadcast, uh, and that's what actually could live online. So here's one of them. So this is this the, this commercial ran right as soon as overtime happened. So looking at that moment. And we can create content now to be served up. And really, well, this is what we're after, isn't it? We want people to appreciate it, to understand that, well, how did they know? Oh, I'd love that. You know, if you look at uh, just aired, you know, a tweet from uh, somebody saying they just aired the two greatest commercials of all time because they were, it was timely, it was in the moment. And so, you know, as we look as brands, I mean, video is extremely expensive. And if we're truly going after the idea of we want to create video that's going to resonate to individuals, uh, that's going to cost a lot of money to do it. So, you know, also you've got the gamble of when we're creating this stuff to live online, do we know whether or not it's going to be successful? So, 
you know, there's an increased dependency with our media partners to come up with a more collaborative, um, creative iteration. And, you know, let's, let's use content that we know will already succeed in the space. So for Buffalo Wild Wings, we partnered with Break.com and got a bunch of clips of, of what we know people already love. So let's make sure that we have that integration there. Um, and then once again, let's reach to our fans and partners uh, to create this content. You know, to speak just to Pop10 again, I think their approach is, is smart because out of when we're trying to hit 12 different segments, we need 12 very different concepts. And in order to, to, to come up with a budget to do that, it would cost a lot of money on the brand and agency side. So that's where I think you know, we've got more uh, dependency on these partners to, to do that sort of thing. And there's eight. Yeah, that's eight. Let's and go eat. Uh, we'd love to have further conversations this evening uh, over cocktails, of course, with everyone. Um, some arguments, uh, you know, that could lead to uh, some solutions as well. So thank you.